most homicides, the victim knows their killer. Obviously, the ex-husband's a, a person of interest right from the start. Do you have any knowledge of anybody that might, might hurt your mother? The only person I can think of is my dad. That was the first person who popped into my brain. You sure your girlfriend's not involved in this? I don't like you. She surprised me. I don't want to be here. I don't want to look at you. I don't want to listen to you. She's just a very angry, dark person. If we believe they're involved, how are we going to get them to admit that? You know, I really can't tell you why I keep lying. We need a confession to get to a murder charge. We know it's going to be a tough case. Hello. Um, my mom was supposed to come home at 11 o'clock, and we just came outside and I was to see what happened. She was like laying in the snow, and it doesn't look like she's breathing. Okay, I'm going to connect you with the ambulance. All right. Okay. I went outside. My mom was laying face down in the snow. Thought she might have had like a heart attack or something. My high blood pressure runs in my family. I didn't really know what was up. I was 14 at the time, you know? I knew it wasn't good. I knew I needed to help her. Is she conscious? No. Is she breathing? No. OK, sir, I have help on the way. They told me to do 100 chest compressions or to keep doing it until the ambulance comes. When I was giving her chest compressions, I could like hear her last breaths coming out of her. They uh, picked my mom up, and then the ambulance like, didn't move for a long time. So you know, obviously, if the ambulance isn't rushing anywhere, the person inside is uh, passed away, right? I received a phone call on uh, Friday, February 29th at about 1 20 after 1 in the morning. In relation to Beverly Parker, I was forwarded the information that she had uh, two young sons and that they found her face down in the snow unresponsive. We believed that it was just a medical episode that had gone bad and that that would be determined in the morning. When I arrived, uh, ambulance was on scene. The family was on scene. The oldest son who was Kashroy and his girlfriend was Dalmi, she was also present. And then Keshroy's uh, brother, I think it was actually his half-brother, Jemson, was also in the residence. Keshroy was just kind of sitting quietly on the couch, just off to himself. I remember Jemson, he was about 14 years old, so just a young boy. He just appeared overwhelmed. I just didn't really understand how something like that could happen to my mom when I just talked to her like 25 minutes before that happened and her saying she was on her way home. My mom is from Guyana. She came from Edmonton in the 80s. My mom was the kind of person that like always wanted the best for like herself and people who were around her. She's very positive. Mom was a really hard worker. She had three jobs. Everything she did was for me and my brother. I was like really close with my mom. Like I was definitely uh, mommy's boy. And then one day she just gone. So that's about it. Typically going to a sudden death, there's not uh, a lot of anticipation. Um, it's it's a it's normally a, a generic call. In this situation, uh, it was a little bit different. Beverly Parker had some markings on her neck, EMS, and the police at the time couldn't determine because of the color of her skin if it was an aging scar that she had from previous or if it was actually a fresh ligature mark. 
what a ligature mark is, it's redness around the neck. There's some marking around one's neck which may indicate that someone's been strangled by using some sort of um, rope or some sort of string or something. At that point, we treated it as a suspicious death. We were then assigned to do interviews. But again, we don't know what we have in this one yet. Keshroy Jemson and Delney, Keshroy's girlfriend, were brought to headquarters, and they're, they're witnesses. In any investigation, it's important for us to separate all the witnesses, and then we try and um, we don't get kind of contamination from everybody's version of events. We get the purest version from, from each person. This group of people had just been through a great big tragedy. So from, from that point, you know, my job was not just to get the information, but also to try and be as compassionate and consoling as possible. So can you just give me an overview of, of what happened, you know, last night? Um, she normally reaches home at 1125, 1130. We waited until it was 11.50, I think. I told Keshroy that why was I'm like, it's strange that she hasn't come home, home yet. So I told him to go check, because maybe she was like in the parking lot in her car or something. And I went and I opened the door just to look around to see if she was coming. And I saw a shadow on the to the side. And I opened the door and I saw that she was face down. And at the time, my brother was sleeping. And I guess he went outside, and she was outside in the snow. And then he called me, and then I called Jason. When I woke up, my brother's girlfriend, Dal, was yelling and saying, Mom, I was stuck in the snow. And I'm like, I thought she was like stuck with her car or something. So I had my shoes on, and then when my brother was walking in, and he was like, he had this look on his face, like something had happened. Do you know if she has any health issues? Um. I know she has a really high blood pressure, and her family has a lot of, um, what's it called? Like, they have a like, really long history of like stroke and heart attack. You have to go with what you're getting. And so, you know, we were running down that road of medical episode. The scene itself was, I define as quiet. There was nothing that would, indicate that there's a huge struggle. Her gloves are right beside her. Her purse is still there. Uh, once they started looking through the purse, the contents are still there, the money's still there. You know, okay, well, maybe maybe this was just a heart attack, right? There was nothing nothing to indicate that, that foul play was involved here. I mean, the only thing that I was obviously suspicious about at the start was these marks they kept we kept hearing about on the neck. A couple of senior cops called me and said, no, Pat. This is a homicide. He said, that's where my money's at, so. So we had a doctor at the hospital who wouldn't give us a cause of death. So we weren't really sure. Until we know a cause of death, we're kind of in a holding pattern. Parker. Yeah. All right. I'm Detective Bill Clark. Can I just swap your chairs there? You can have a little more room there for the We have Beverly Parker, a single hardworking mom, found dead on her front porch. Is there a criminal component to it? Quite possible. But the only person that can give us the cause of death is a homicide, is the medical examiner. So we have to wait until a complete autopsy was done. But in the meantime, we have all three police witnesses. Delmay, she's around 19, 20 years of age. Keshroy being identified as 18, and Jemson being identified as a 14-year-old youngest son. We don't know what went on yet. It was just basically a fact-finding mission at that point. So my plan was to find out more about the whole family dynamics and the whole situation. Does your brother's girlfriend live with you guys? My brother and his girlfriend have a daughter together, and to, to her, their daughter lives with me and my mom and my brother, and she was just visiting. When my brother was 16, he worked at Walmart and he met Dell there. And he moved back into the house with the baby that he had with Dell. So it was good to have him back. I could tell my mom was happy to have him back too. Did she die? That's what I was told, yes. Del May 
was probably the most interesting of the three. Who in this relation is is this person to you? She's nobody. She's nobody? Yeah, I'm, I'm Mercedes the baby. I'm her mom. She had a very cold demeanor to her from the get-go. That's why I thought it was odd when you mentioned that she meant nothing to you. She didn't, doesn't like me. Well, didn't like me very much. There was an animosity between the two. You know, we learned that there was a baby involved, a baby Mercedes, who was Keshroy and Delmi's baby. Today we had a slight argument over the phone because... You and your mom? Yeah. She said she was trying to protect me by saying that I should attempt to get custody for her. That was a big sticking point with the mother that she wanted that baby in Keshroy's custody, not Delmi's. She's going to try to get I'm um, trying to file for an adoption, and I disagreed with her, and I told her that I felt like it was the wrong thing to do. Because, um, and she got upset with me and said that I was disrespecting her. Beverly was not happy with Delmay as a mother, and, and even Keshroy as being a, a good dad, and constantly was at them for their parenting skills, or lack thereof. She called every, like, 20 minutes to check on Mercedes. She calls you every yeah, 20 she minutes? she calls him. Is there a reason why she calls every 20 minutes? She's just, I don't know, she's kind of a control freak. We're getting all the family dynamics out now. And then they're taken back home, you know, because we have nothing. We have nothing to say this is a criminal act or anything. forensic team end up going to the medical examiner's office and we participate in the autopsy. Now that we could have a very close look at the line that encircled her neck, we saw it was very like a ligature mark. It was very defined, it was very thin, um, probably about two millimeters in thickness. Also more significant, as uh, strangulation is occurring, there's small blood vessels in the eyelids that start to burst, called petechia. So as he rolls the eyelids up, and it adds, adds to the evidence that this was a strangulation by ligature. By the time 9.30 rolls around, Detective Jim Harder gives me the phone call. And he says, you sitting down, Pat? You ready for this? Because guess what? We're going to work. It's a homicide. We're still waiting for uh, a search warrant to get inside the house. So we worked the outside of the scene. In this case, we virtually had no forensic evidence. We still didn't have much of anything to go on in relation to having any persons of interest. So the next course of action is the three people that found her. So we are gonna have to round up Delmi, Keshroy, and Jemson and bring them back. Let's bring them in, just as witnesses again. Let's now tell them this is a homicide investigation. Now we're saying someone did kill her, someone took her life. And let's see if they have any ideas who might have done this. Did they tell you why we need to bring you back? Nope. Okay, well, things have come to light since uh, the last time we spoke. They uh, did not autopsy on your mom. Yeah. Okay. And your mom's been strangled. It's a murder investigation. She didn't die of a heart attack or natural causes or anything. Someone strangled her. Now we need to know what the heck was going on there last night. Okay. I just remember feeling confused, angry. I kind of like broke down at that point, you know? I mean, something went on and someone strangled her and left her outside in the snow there. Everybody deals with death and grief differently. Jemson was in shock, just overwhelmed, had no idea. Uh, have you told me everything honestly and truthfully that you earlier? Yes. You go upstairs to sleep. The next thing you hear is your brother's girlfriend waking you up. Yeah. Does she come right up to your room or what? No, she's yelling from the stairs saying, you know, he just described it all. It's basically the same story he told me earlier, which was a good sign. Do you have any knowledge of anybody that might, might hurt your mother? The only person I can think of is my dad. 
And what's the story on him? Um, I and my mom were um, going through a divorce. Most homicides, the victim knows their killer. Now we got to look at the ex-husband for sure. I had this strong feeling in my head that it was my dad. He doesn't like it. One of the old, old rules of thumb, per se, is there are not very many random acts of violence. Just because by the location and how it happened, someone who knew her. When I was interviewing Jemson, I asked him who might have done this. He mentioned his father. Beverly had an ex-husband, Morris Parker. We got on top of that one real fast. In the meantime, Delmi and Kesroy, I guess we could say they're persons of interest. So they were placed together in a soft room to see what the conversation was going to be between the two of them. So I'll leave you guys here. I'll just close the door so you have some privacy. Um, the soft room, uh, it's just a comfortable room. It's to make people relaxed and go, hey, it's almost like you're sitting in your living room, a small living room. What? There in the police station, it's common law in Canada. Your, your audio and video recorded. We don't tell them that. There's no fun to it's always a strategy move when you put witnesses together. There's a lot of times when we're out of the room, they're going to talk more. Cash Roy, can you come with me? I'll talk to you in this room, and there'll be someone right in to interview you, OK? okay. Now, with Cash Roy and Delmi, we need to tell them that, hey, this is now a homicide. Hi, you're Del? Hi. Hi, Del. My name's Peter. Oh. Did I just wake you up? Sorry. Hi. Hi. I was asked to interview uh, Delmi. I've got in the back of my mind, I wonder what she knows. When I went in to interview Kesroy, I told him right away when I walked in that it was a murder investigation. His mother was murdered. OK, she did not die of a heart attack. OK, she was murdered. All right. And that's why. So this is no longer just a, a simple uh, sudden death investigation. This is a homicide investigation. I uh, purposely did not tell him how his mother was murdered because any normal person is going to ask that question. Well, how'd she die? I'm expecting that to come out within the next few seconds. Someone killed your mom, and we need to get to the bottom of it as to what happened last night. I don't like the fact that he didn't ask about how she died, but I'll be telling my team that. I won't be telling him that. He has no idea I don't like that. I'm just his buddy now. I'm building the rapport. It's officially been labeled as a homicide, OK? And the reason we needed to talk to you again is just to go over what happened yesterday. We just need to know a few things. Number one, do you know who would have done this to her? Um, anybody. She wasn't the best. I don't know. She wasn't the nicest person to have around. And is there like a normal routine when she gets home? Is there anything that goes on when she normally gets home? Um, she yells at everybody. She yells at them? Oh, yeah. She is insane. Like, she's crazy. When I found out that she disliked Beverly as much as she did, it kind of made sense for me as to her reactions. But it also was a bit of a red flag for me. You know, she gave me enough hell when she was alive, and she's dead now, and she's still giving me hell. I, I just, I don't want to sound unreasonable. She just was not my favorite person. It was, it was confusing. It was the first time I'd ever run into anybody with that type of, um, what I felt was callousness. Now, is there any reason why I should suspect that you might have been involved in Beth, Beth's death? Mm, I don't think so. You don't think so? N no, I, no. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm exhausted, I haven't slept. When somebody laughs at you when you're talking to them about a homicide, it's, it's puzzling. And I had to wonder where it was coming from. Do you have any idea who might have done this to your mom? No. Do you have any problems with your mom? We had a little argument because she wanted me to um, try to get custody over my daughter. She was trying to get adoption from Mercedes. Okay. 
And I was really making me angry. She's like, oh, yeah. She's just... Did she not see you as a fit mother? She decided that, um, that she hates me. And At the end of the day, we got Del May, who just doesn't present well. And now we have Keshroy, who is saying stuff about his mom and about the relationship and about uh, Del May. Now, all of a sudden, things are starting to come together. Now, I know your, your girlfriend's made some comments to you, but uh, it's not a big deal that your mom's dead to her. No, I know. They didn't get along. You sure your girlfriend's not involved in this? Yes, I'm sure. Nothing? No. Didn't do anything? Didn't make any phone calls to have someone do this to your mom? <laughs> no. Sure. No? You know, your spidey senses are tingling. You're going, oh, this, this isn't making a lot of sense. They're just not reacting as the normal person would react. By the end of that interview, I could have went into an interrogation mode, but I don't think it would have been beneficial to us because we didn't know enough about the whole case yet. Are they really suspect? I don't believe Jemson's involved. In Kesroy's case, you know, this whole demeanor was so passive that, you know, he almost didn't think he had the balls to do something like that. Whereas Delmi... And then he's like, why are you smiling? I'm like, because it helps me not be angry. <laughs> This is some angry woman that would definitely have the capability to do it, the mindset to do it, but could she do it physically? Once we had completed the interviews with Delmi and Keshroy, uh, Morris Jemson's father was brought in forthwith. I didn't really have an idea of who did it. That was the first person who popped into my brain, just because that's the only person my mom has confrontations with. When I meet him, he's very upfront. He was very upfront about where he was and what he had been doing. I believed him, um, but I still need to check out his alibi. And that was done through two interviews with two people who happened to come with him, which was good. Looking back, my dad's not that kind of person. My dad would never be that mad at my mom to do something like that. At the end of the day, we know that Morris is eliminated. So that leaves us Delmi and Keshroy. So we finally got the warrant, and now we're, we're going into the house. So the first thing I did is I take a video through the whole house, upstairs, downstairs, and the main floor. When we were in the house, there was nothing that gave us any indication that there was a fight or a, any sort of struggle. Walls weren't dented in. The door wasn't brought off the hinges. At the end of our day, there is nothing that we gathered that would have assisted forensically with the investigation at this point. DNA wasn't going to solve this because we had nothing to test. We felt Keshroy and Delmi were involved, but we had no evidence. We had nothing. If we believe they're involved, how are we going to get them to admit that? So what's our best plan of attack for an interrogation type of interview? We recognize with a lack of physical evidence that this is going to fall on a confession. We have eliminated Jemson, so now we're down to two. So our concentration was on Keshroy and Delmi. Pat McCormick, the detective in charge, he decided that they were going to have Rob Mills come in and do the final interview of Keshroy. I wasn't happy. I had all the rapport with Keshroy. He liked me. You know, I wanted my crack at him. Detective Mills had just come back from a forensic interview course. Sometimes it doesn't hurt just to bring in fresh eyes. We decided to put Keshroy in the hard room. I want him on a chair which doesn't have any wheels on it. He's stationary. I like to have a chair that has wheels so that at appropriate times during the interview, I can move in and out. Our strategy is, is that we are going to confront Kashroy directly and tell him that we believe that he was involved. I've kind of gone through uh, what you said before, okay? And I want to tell you right now, I have no doubt in my mind right now that you're responsible for the murder of your mother. I stood over him. I wanted to make him believe that I know things and that I'm in control of how this interview is going to, going to uh, roll out. I would never do something like that. His denial was very weak. That's the red flag. The writing's on the wall. 
It is. It is. You can't deny it. Where is it. this proof that I know what happened? I don't understand. You have this like recorded. You have this written down. Um, one of the strategies I decided to try and employ with Delmi was to present her with the information and our beliefs as fact. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. I don't know who did. Well, I think that's where you're getting a little stuck on things, and it's okay. That's what you think, or that's what you know? No, that's what we know. It was simply going to be a positive confrontation, and I knew I was pushing a lot of buttons. It's amazing just how composed you guys are over the death of this woman. I didn't do anything to hurt my mom. We can sit here and talk about this. You can, you can say that as many times as you want. Maybe I have no emotion, but it doesn't mean I hate my mom. Okay, I, I, I cry, but I hold in my pain. That is how I am. I hold in my emotion, I hold in my anger. I loved my mom. I may not have told her that. I wanted to get him into the story about what had happened. Let's, I didn't do it. Okay, well, let's talk about that. I look to the side and I look back and I saw a shadow there. And then I opened the door and I saw my mom was face down in the snow. He kept going over the story and over the story and over the story. And Kesroy kept changing it. You said that you were at the front door. That screen door was closed. You said that there was a mist on that on that door. Yeah. There is no way that you saw your mother laying there in the snow. Because we had a detective stand at that doorway at the same time that you were there. And you know what? You can't see anything in that yard. Really? Absolutely you cannot. If it's the truth, you will remember those little details. But when you're telling a lie, you can't remember what you've said. Before I could see out that freaking window, I cleared it. I cleared the fog. And I never said I saw a body. You cannot see a body from that window. That's not what you told me. Well, if you have, if, have you been recording this? Yes. You have given me three versions of the same event. He just kept talking, Kefroy. So that was a good job by Rob of doing that. I don't know who did it. I don't think he did it. Why don't you think Keshroy did it? Because why, it's why? Keshroy. Did you ever ask him? Did I ask him if he killed his mom? No. I didn't think I had to. Hey, man, did you kill your mom? You think that's funny? No, it's just you absurd. You are one hard person. Do you know that? Do you know how, do you know how fucked up that sounds? Delmi was just a dark person. Maybe he did. I don't know. Ask him. Don't ask me because I don't know what happened. Honestly, I would love to help you because I don't like you. I don't want to be here. I don't want to look at you. I don't want to listen to you. She wasn't giving up anything. Trying to not yell at you is a challenge. I don't know what happened. You know you're contradicting yourself because before, when you came in here all tough and was throwing stuff in my face before I showed any emotion, you're quite intended on telling me that I did this. It was about four hours in, and I didn't see Cashroy really weakening. He didn't know Rob, right? He's a brand new guy coming in. All of a sudden, this guy's brought in, and he's coming hard at me. Well, I'm not going to tell this guy nothing. Can I smoke? Oh, there's no smoking in here. Outside, though? I decided to review the video of Keshroy and Delmi in the room by themselves in preparation for my re-interview with her. Fucking stupid. You in the night time for fucking six hours asking me the same damn question over and over. Calm down, Delmi. Calm. I'm not. Why are you so angry? Because I'm fucking tired. As I'm listening to them, I hear Keshroy quietly say something. See? It was jaw dropping. I was literally elbows on the table. My hands were pressed against the headphones. I replayed it over and over again to make sure I knew what I was hearing. When Peter Draganiak shows us what he's got, I'm like blown away. I'm like, holy mackerel. What is that thing? It was pretty evident to me that they didn't know that anything they were saying was being recorded. It was exciting, but at the same time, I was like, do we really have this authority to use this? Because if they don't know, if they don't think they're being recorded, if they don't have that, they do have an expectation of privacy. And in Canada, the laws are pretty strict on that. We're not going to be able to get this information into the court as evidence. And so I really wanted to know if there was some way we could work at capturing this information. 
again. You want to ensure that you can prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. We've all been in the same scene. Our footprints are there together. This pressure was still on to, to get that confession. Peace out, bitch. <laughs> You're pushing me. And so our stories don't match up. But you know what? The only thing that matters is that my mom was face down in the snow. Mills is struggling. He's not getting anywhere with a confession. The tape is a huge piece of evidence. But every one of us in that room knew if they did not confess, Delmi and Cashroy were going home that night. They were not under arrest. They were actually free to leave at any point. I'm coming up for second, so I'm going to tell you. Rob came into the monitor room, and we were all in there. and. We just started strategizing about what we should do next. And I suggested, let's try a two-prong approach. Let's try it where I go in now. So while we're talking in the room, Keshroy actually is on the phone to tell me. Hi. What's wrong? They think that we all killed your mom. It's gonna be OK. You know you didn't do anything. No, it's not OK. This is not OK. I'm gonna just try to leave here. I'll call you back. All of a sudden, I see, I see out of the corner of my eye at the monitor, Keshroy starts leaving the room. <laughs> And I thought, oh, oh, if he leaves the station, we're done. I interviewed Keshroy for about four hours. He had not made any admissions. One of the ideas I was throwing around was, OK, maybe we should uh, put Bill Clark in there, just simply because of his relationship with Keshroy. While we're in the middle of discussing it, I noticed Keshroy start to walk out of the room. So I dart out of the monitor and I says, oh, we got to go deal with this guy now. And I says, OK, let's just, I, I just want to talk for a minute and then you can get out of here. But what happened that night? What went wrong? What made you snap? What made you go to that extent? Something must have just clicked in your head that just set you off. I thought, we got to change the tactic a bit. And I start now to become more his friend and the father figure. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but it's like you're caught in the middle between your mom and Delmi, trying to make both happy. Yeah. And that's tough, because you don't want to do anything to make your mom mad. You don't want to make do anything to make your girlfriend mad. She hated your mom, and you knew that. Yeah, Detective Clark makes a connection with whoever he's interviewing, and Keshroy liked Bill. And what about Delmi? If she's not involved in this, then just tell us. Actually, she doesn't have a lot of control. In what way? Um, emotionally. Yeah? Yeah. Dal is just angry. She's just angry all the time at everyone. And she doesn't like my mom at all. And she's just a very angry, dark person. And I guess I tried to, like, make her different, but I really couldn't. Kashroy now and believes somebody understood his relationship with Dalmi. You know, I really can't tell you. Why I keep lying to cover up and protect her? You try and stay quiet. My heart, I know my heart's beating. It's like, come on, Cashroy, you're right there. And what happened that night? Mm. When I came home and I was outside, mm -hmm. and I said hi to her, and she was just already mad at me. And she didn't really say anything, she didn't really look at me. And as she's going towards the door, I just quickly turned around. And, um, and I had the rope in my hands already. And I just, I started strangling her. And she fell on the spot where she landed. Because of me. How long did you keep? around her neck? I have no idea. Until there was like no more movement. I have to tell you, you are going to be charged with murder. I know that. All right. And it's exactly what I deserve. It's my fault. But it's not just your fault. I think right? it's just my fault. If I never met her and never spoke with her, I would never actually have such thoughts in my mind. I know I got him. I know he's going to jail for murder. I'm now concentrating on, I want to get Delmi. She hates my mom, she wishes she was dead. She didn't want her in her life. 
I honestly don't know how it came to me and I'm doing it. Well, she told me to make sure that I had protection to cover my arms in case there's a struggle or anything. And to make sure I had gloves. So did you change your clothes or do anything like that? I had on a sweater. It was black. And um, then she just told me that in order to um, make it seem like we didn't do anything, um, we have to get my brother to come downstairs to see to um, say he found her mom. So he had no idea what was going on? No, he had no idea what was going on. OK. Like, still to this day, I find it hard to believe. You know what I mean? I definitely feel like uh, Dell planted a seed in my brother's head. What did she say to you when you first come downstairs? She, when I went downstairs, she told me to get rid of everything. What did you do with the room? I was sticking in a little hole in the couch. Okay, and what did you do with the gloves? I pulled them off. It's all inside this. All I want to be starting to be It's all inside the VHS. Not only did we did he provide evidence that was hold back, he provided direct evidence linking him to the crime, really solidified the whole uh, confession. We talked a lot more about Delmi's involvement then for a while. I told her that's my mom's all her life. What did she say? She's actually smiling. She's smiling? Yeah, she said you actually did. That was a, a huge turning point for us as far as categorizing Delmi. I realized that there could be a better opportunity to get more information from her with somebody that she liked versus speaking to me. So obviously some things have changed. Keshroy had stated that Delmi coached him and she wanted to have it happen. So I didn't have to detect her lies. I knew she was lying. You suggested to him that things would be a lot easier if his mother was dead. Even though she knew that I knew the whole truth, she was aggressive and, and she would fight back. So he's given us a full confession. Why would he drag you into this? Maybe he's If you didn't have involvement. Maybe he's not. Could he have misunderstood what you were saying? Misunderstood what, that she's a bitch? How do you misunderstand she's a bitch from running a show? Well, you told me earlier that you, you wanted her dead. Of course I wanted her dead. And normally, people will shut up. If they don't want to talk or don't want to give me any information, they, they'll stop. But she didn't stop. He told you. No, he didn't. He told you. He came down into the basement with the murder weapon. And you watched him down. hide it. You watched him hide the gloves he wore. You told him to wear a long sleeve shirt. Did you say, if I were going to do something like that, I would wear a long sleeve shirt? No, I would, ne I would never say, go put on a black, a, a black shirt, a, you know, long sleeve shirt, or even... She mentioned it was a black shirt, and she stumbled on that word because she knew she's saying something that actually happened, but I hadn't provided that to her. I would, ne I would never say, go put on a black, a, a black shirt, a, you know, long sleeve shirt. I have a slip-up like that where there's, there's exclusive knowledge of the crime that hasn't been provided is, is a big piece of evidence. Do you think I like being here? Do you think I like you? No, I need a cigarette. Well, I learned from Detective Clark that he now has information as far as evidence that we need to see. So the forensic team goes back to the residence along with Detective Clark. So as we go down into the basement and we cut open the couch, at the very bottom is this gold-colored rope, very narrow rope, which is consistent with the ligature mark. Further to that, uh, Detective Clark directs us to this VCR, and in the slot are two gloves. Um, we seized the clothing piece by piece, eventually submitted them to the forensic laboratory for further testing. Now we got it, direct evidence linking Keshroy and Delmi to the crime. Keshroy was going to be charged. Then I thought we had enough to uh, charge Delmi. One of the frustrating parts of, of being a homicide detective is what you know and what you can prove are often very, very far apart. And what happened that night? I just quickly turned around. And, uh, and I, 
had the rope in my hands already, and I started strangling her. Me and my brother were close growing up, like pretty, really close. It's just weird that uh, the different paths, the different uh, mentalities siblings can have. I think everybody knows one kid that feels like their parent is out to get them, and that's definitely not the case. I couldn't ask for a better mom, and uh, I definitely believe everything she did was out of love, and it was um, for our best interest. But um, you don't realize that till it's too late. Okay, I need you to come on here. And for uh, Cash Roy, it's too late. You know, as far as Jemson's concerned, I do consider him another victim in all this. He truly loved his mother, and uh, you know, you've lost your mom now, your brother's out of your life too. I hope he turned out okay. My brother got sentenced to life, but um, he's eligible for, for parole in a couple of years or something like that. And he's uh, tried to reach out to me, but I, I don't really want to be around him or want someone like that around my family. When I first found out that he did it, uh, I was angry, I was mad, I was sad, I hated him, I wished bad upon him. But uh, as I got older, I just realized that uh, you're not going to move past it if you still have like hate inside of you towards someone. Me forgiving him gives me closure. <laughs> Delmi was charged with murder and with conspiracy to commit murder. But uh, when it came time to go to trial, we weren't able to get Keshroy to provide inf information against Delmi. So the, the court ended up withdrawing the charges. I think he was caught up with the fact that we both can't go to jail because now who's going to raise our daughter? Which that's, that's his choice, that's his decision. People are a creator of their own demise. I'm only here to clean up. So she walks. Castroy Bristow, he's really not a bad person. And I will not say that about very many criminals. He got caught in a bad situation, made a bad decision as a young man, and now he's got to pay for it for years. It's sad. I only wish I had more time with her. It happened when I was 14. 14 years isn't that long at all. I wish she had, could see me grow up. I wish she could see my kid grow up. I have a two-year-old son, and I um, just want him to know what kind of person his grandma was and uh, all the things that she did do for me. Or if I had to say the one thing I miss the most is since my mom passed away, I was just like knowing that you always have someone there for you. Probably won't ever find home again, but uh, I can like make home with my son, you know what I mean, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs>